Hello Rocket fans and welcome back to the Copenhagen Suborbital's Rocket Shop where we continue working on the world's only crewed, crowd-funded space rocket, Spica. Today is February 16th and it is time for some rocket updates. To start the day off, let's begin by taking a look at our astronaut seat prototype. Now that we have most of the components for it ready, Mineka took it to the welding table and welded the side panels and back support together, forming a single frame. That dramatically decreases the number of zip ties we need for it to hold itself together. The hip and knee hinges that connect the seat to the footrest can be attached with our custom bearings, which means the seat itself is now ready, and we can start working on the shock absorbing frame for it in the coming weeks. Then as I turned my camera away for just a second from him, Mineka quickly welded the pipes that will go onto our propellant tank bulkheads in a few weeks. Which speaking of, we still have a couple of flange rings to put together on a welding jig and do a little more welding on them before they can go onto our bulkhead side skirts. Unfortunately the last flange had a poorly cut section so we'll need to order some new sheet stock before we can plasma cut a new one out. But on the good news side, Bo received a tiny quiet compressor that he will use to finish his homemade soldering paste dispenser which will ease our life a lot when we start to solder our new swirl injectors for the upcoming hot fire tests using our BPM-5 engine from the Nexo 2 rocket. Stay tuned for when we have a date set for that so you can tune into our live stream or in person. And now for the main dish of the day, which was our long seam welds. After weeks of tweaking and experimenting, we are finally starting to feel confident in their quality. However, there are a few ways to go about welding these tanks and instead of deciding on one of them blindly, we would like to test and compare the different welding techniques to see which one is the strongest or how far apart from each other they actually are. So we began collecting test pieces for laboratory pull tests as well as our home etching experiments. I'm going to try and put this, <coughs> well, background of this is, this is just a piece of 3mm uh, stainless steel plate. That's the stuff we use for our tanks. And this is a welding test with about 70% burn through. After this, the, uh, this part up here, in order to check how much it actually burned through, has been polished off with very nice sandpaper. And then a little bit of chemistry has been added. So uh, unfortunately, it did, it's not as strong as intended. But there is a difference in color or a difference in, if, in reflection uh, along this finely ground uh, edge here, where it's actually possible to see how deep the material actually melted. So I'm going to try and, and orient this one in the light uh, and then see if we can if we might be able to, to, uh, to capture the slight, slight difference in, in coloration. As you know, we've been spending weeks, also a little more weeks than we thought necessary to hone our skills at doing really high quality weldings uh, on our big uh, long seam welder rig. Um, these weldings, long seam weldings in the uh, in the tanks, in the propellant tanks, are probably the most important welding we're going to have to do on the entire speaker rocket. So um, we have two different methods. One is a fairly easy and fast one, and another one we we change the uh, procedure a little bit, but it makes it about twice as uh, as annoying, and it takes twice as long to do. Um, but we did a number of, um, of test uh, parts today for well, shear strength uh, measurement. Um, we need to check the quality of weldings and that's simply done by a very large machine that just grabs either end of these little dog bones and then it just pulls until it snaps. And it gives you out some nice, uh, some nice readings on when it snapped, and from there you can basically calculate the, uh, the, the, uh, or derive the quality of your weld. So um, we got twelve pieces. Three of them are just uh, standard pieces of plate with no, uh, with no welds on it. So they'll be our data reference, and then we'll see how the other versions fare. So we're really, really looking forward to see the results. Hopefully we'll have them within the week. And first of all, it tells us if we can use the easy procedure or we have to do the hard one. Uh, but regardless, we should be welding uh, speaker propellant tanks next week. That is all for now. So as always, thank you for watching and supporting. If you don't want to miss any of our future updates, make sure to subscribe and ring the notification bell so we can see you next time when we get one step closer to space. Copenhagen Suborbitals is a non-profit all-volunteer project. The reason we are getting so close to reaching space on our speaker rocket is because all of our crowdfunding supporters. If you've been following this project and feel passionate about new ways of exploring space and building rockets, 
you can help us out by going over to our website, www.copsub.com, and becoming a supporter with a small monthly or one-time donation that helps us pay workshop rent and buy materials. And in return, you get all these insider videos on building a space program which you don't really get anywhere else. So on behalf of everybody at Copenhagen Suborbitals, thank you for your support and we'll see you next time.